Hi everyone, I'm Emma, and today I'm starting to share a story that's close to my heart. Before we dive in, please make sure to like and subscribe for more tales like this one. All right, let's get started. When I married Michael, it felt like I had finally found my happily ever after. We both dreamed of starting a family soon after our wedding. As newlyweds, you're still navigating through getting to know each other's families deeper, and that was where my story took an unexpected turn. You'll love my mom's organic teas, Emma. She swears by them for just about everything, Michael assured me one evening as we prepared for our first weekend visit to his parents' home since our wedding. I was eager to bond with my in-laws, especially since Michael always spoke fondly of his family traditions. Upon arrival, Linda, my mother-in-law, embraced me warmly. Emma, darling, we're so happy to have you as part of our family. I've prepared a special tea just for you. It's a family secret for health and vitality. Her enthusiasm was infectious, and I found myself looking forward to what I thought was a sincere gesture of welcome. Thank you, Linda. It's so thoughtful of you to make something special for me, I replied, sipping the herbal concoction. It was unique, a taste I wasn't familiar with, but pleasant. Oh, you'll get used to the taste. Just wait and see how good you feel. I insist you drink it every day, Linda said with a wink. As months passed, the daily ritual of drinking Linda's special tea became as routine as morning coffee. Yet despite our hopes and efforts, Michael and I had no luck starting the family we so desired. My doctor had reassured me multiple times that there were no medical issues preventing me from conceiving, which only left me with more questions than answers. During one of these visits, Linda pulled me aside, her voice lowered. Keep up with the tea, Emma. These things sometimes take a little patience and a lot of faith. Months had slipped by with no sign of the one thing Michael and I desired most, a baby. With each passing day, my frustration and worry deepened. One afternoon, Sarah dropped by as I was brewing yet another pot of Linda's tea. She watched with a furrowed brow before finally speaking up. Emma, don't you think it's a bit odd that nothing has happened yet? You've been drinking that tea every day for months. Doesn't it strike you as strange? I sighed, the seed of doubt Sarah planted beginning to sprout. I've thought about it, but what could possibly be wrong with the tea? Linda swears by it. Sarah leaned in, her voice dropping to a whisper. But what if it's not what she claims? What if it's preventing you? The thought had crossed my mind, but hearing it aloud made it all too real. You think Linda would do that? But why? I don't know, Emma. But maybe it's time we find out exactly what's in that tea, Sarah suggested. With a mix of apprehension and determination, I agreed. We sent a sample of the tea to a laboratory for testing, unbeknownst to my in-laws. Meanwhile, at a family dinner, I hesitated as Linda poured me another cup of tea. Actually, I think I'll skip the tea tonight, Linda. Linda's eyes narrowed just a fraction, her smile tightening. Oh? I hope you're not feeling unwell. You know, it's really not like any ordinary tea, it's special. Michael chimed in, oblivious to the tension. Mom's just trying to look out for you, Emma. Maybe give it a little longer? Caught in the moment, but my decision was made. What was supposed to be a symbol of familial care was turning into a source of doubt, and I needed to know the truth. In the days that followed, during a rare visit alone with Rachel at a small cafe, she shared some unsettling insights about Linda. You know, Mom has always had this controlling streak. When I was a teen, she'd sneak health supplements into my food because she thought I was too unruly, Rachel confessed, stirring her coffee absentmindedly. The pieces began to fit together forming a picture I was afraid to see. Could Linda be manipulating me just as she had controlled Rachel? The answer came weeks later with the arrival of the lab results. The tea contained mild herbal contraceptives. I was stunned, betrayed. With the evidence in hand, I confronted Linda the next morning in her sunlit kitchen. Linda, we need to talk about this tea you've been giving me, I said firmly, my hands clutching the lab report. Oh, Emma, what's wrong? Isn't it helping? Linda asked, turning from the stove with a look of feigned concern. It's been doing something, all right. It contains contraceptives. Why would you do that, Linda? 
My voice trembled with anger and disbelief. Linda's face turned pale, then flushed with anger. That's a serious accusation, Emma. Why would I sabotage my own son's chance at happiness? I need the truth, Linda, I insisted, stepping closer to her. She glanced around nervously, perhaps realizing the gravity of the situation. You're mistaken. It must be a lab error, she replied quickly, too quickly. That doesn't explain the lab results. I held up the report, my hands shaking. Linda snapped then, her usual composure crumbling. I thought I was helping. I didn't think you were ready. You and Michael are so young. I wanted to protect you from making a mistake. Her confession struck me like a physical blow. Protect us? By deceiving me? By controlling our lives? Tears of frustration and betrayal began to well up in my eyes. Linda reached out as if to comfort me, but I stepped back, repulsed by her touch. This wasn't protection, Linda. This was control. How could you? I choked out, the room spinning with the enormity of her betrayal. Linda's eyes filled with tears, too, but it was too late for apologies. I thought I was doing the right thing. I trusted you, I whispered, my voice breaking. The realization that the family I had embraced was so fundamentally broken was overwhelming. As I stormed out of the kitchen, leaving Linda behind, tears streaming down my face, I knew that this was a turning point. There would be no going back to the way things were. Linda's actions had not only threatened my dream of a family, but had shattered the trust I had placed in my new family. This betrayal, now out in the open, would change everything. The air was thick with anticipation as I prepared for the family gathering that would change everything. I had decided on a plan that would expose Linda's deceit without a direct confrontation, one that required careful orchestration and nerve. Under the guise of celebrating a fake pregnancy, Michael and I invited our family and closest friends to a small celebration at our home. The idea of celebrating something that hadn't happened was painful, but necessary to draw out Linda's true colors. As guests arrived, the atmosphere was cheerful, filled with congratulations and well wishes. I watched Linda closely, noting the gleam of pride in her eyes as people embraced me, her deception hidden beneath layers of feigned joy. During the event, I made it a point to casually bring up the topic of Linda's special tea. Linda has been so wonderful, giving me her special blend for months now, I announced to a small group that included some of Linda's closest friends, my phone discreetly recording from my pocket. Oh, Emma, it's the least I could do, Linda responded, basking in the attention. It's all about timing and a little help from Mother Nature or a good recipe, she added with a sly wink. As the evening progressed, I found an opportunity to isolate Linda with her confidant, Mrs. Thompson, under the pretense of needing help in the kitchen. As they prepared food away from the rest of the party, I leaned in from the doorway, the recorder still running. You know, I was a bit worried at first, Linda confessed to Mrs. Thompson, her voice a mixture of relief and pride. Emma and Michael are so young, and starting a family is a big step. I wanted to make sure they had more time whether they thought they needed it or not. Mrs. Thompson, unaware of the full context, chuckled. You always were one for thinking ahead, Linda. How did you manage it? Just a little herbal adjustment in her tea, Linda whispered, her tone conspiratorial. Just until I felt they were truly ready. My heart pounded as I captured every word, the gravity of her admission sinking in. As the evening drew to a close, I gathered everyone in the living room under the pretense of a toast. Michael stood beside me, his expression a mixture of confusion and support, still unaware of what was about to unfold. Ladies and gentlemen, I have something very important to share, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. It's about the tea Linda has been giving me. I played the recording. Linda's words echoed through the room, clear and undeniable. The room fell silent, the jovial atmosphere replaced by a heavy stillness. Linda's face drained of color as she realized what had happened. The guests turned to look at her, shock and disbelief written across their faces. This, this isn't what it looks like, Linda stammered, looking around as if seeking an ally. But there were none to be found. 
The betrayal was too deep. The manipulation too clear. I trusted you, Linda. We all trusted you, I said, my voice breaking with emotion. You chose to deceive us, to control something so personal. Why? Linda opened her mouth to respond, but no words came out. The damage was done. Her actions, now exposed, showed her true intentions in a light no one could ignore. The gathering quickly disbanded, the festive spirit shattered by the weight of the deception uncovered. As people left, the looks they gave Linda were a mix of pity and disdain. The night ended not with celebration, but with a profound revelation. Linda's manipulations were now public, and her relationship with everyone in the room was irreparably altered. As for me, I was left to ponder the future, one that I knew would be free from her interference, but forever marked by her betrayal. The revelation of Linda's deceit had immediate and profound repercussions. In the aftermath of the exposure at the gathering, the family was left reeling. Michael, who had stood by my side unknowingly throughout the ordeal, was now confronted with the stark reality of his mother's manipulations. His trust in her shattered, replaced by a fierce protectiveness over our future together. John, Linda's husband, was equally appalled, his usually calm demeanor giving way to outrage at the betrayal within his own home. Linda's once pristine reputation amongst her social circle began to crumble as the word of her manipulations spread. The friends who had witnessed her exposure firsthand shared the tale with others. And soon, Linda found herself ostracized from the groups she once frequented. The community that had respected her for her seeming wisdom and maternal warmth now saw her as manipulative and untrustworthy. Further adding to her downfall, unrelated past unethical behaviors within a local community group came to light. These activities, which included financial discrepancies and misleading conduct, had gone unnoticed until Linda's general conduct was called into question. This led to legal troubles that stripped her of any remaining facades of integrity. For Michael and me, the need to distance ourselves from the toxic environment became a priority. We decided to move to a new city, seeking a fresh start away from the shadows of deceit. In this new setting, away from the oppressive influence of Linda, we found peace and a renewed sense of hope. Months later, our dreams were finally realized as I conceived naturally. The joy of this new beginning was magnified by the strength and closeness we had forged through our trials. As I reflect on everything that happened, I see the ordeal not just as a series of painful events, but as a defining chapter in my life. It taught me the critical importance of trusting my instincts and valuing genuine relationships over forced familial ties. The support of true friends like Sarah and the newfound closeness with Rachel showed me the strength of bonds chosen and nurtured out of love and mutual respect, rather than obligation. This experience, while harrowing, highlighted the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity for renewal. As Michael and I look forward to the arrival of our child, we do so with a clear understanding of the kind of parents we want to be, open, honest, and supportive, never imposing our will on our children as Linda did. In sharing this story, my hope is that it serves as a reminder of the power of truth and the importance of standing up against manipulation, no matter how difficult the path may seem. The victory is not just in overcoming, but in the growth and wisdom gained along the way. The story has come to an end, and you've seen journey through betrayal, exposure, and ultimately triumph. Now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the way Emma handled Linda's deceit? Was her approach of setting up a trap and exposing Linda publicly justified? Or do you think there could have been another way to address the betrayal? Do you believe that public exposure was the right path to justice? Or is there a line that shouldn't be crossed when dealing with family? Share your opinions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more compelling tales, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot and helps us bring you more stories that matter.